All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you from San Diego as usual, lovely morning here. And today I'm joined by Jermaine Edwards, who is in London in the UK. How are you doing, Jermaine? Doing well, excited to be here, John. Thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah, and Jermaine is an Inc. Magazine featured author, um, interviewed about customer growth, B2B relationship expert. And today we're going to talk about exponential growth, focusing on existing key customers. And as we were talking before coming on air here is right now, obviously, with you know the crisis and, and people reassessing their business, et cetera, your key customers are even more key than they were before because a lot of people are going to be focusing on making sure they maintain those customers and then try and grow business with the with the existing customer base as new customers may be a little harder to come by right now yeah yeah absolutely so if if not and if organizations aren't doing that right now then they're about to feel a real punch in the face when uh, <laughs> customers start to kind of retract significantly and everybody's consolidating. So you need to find more creative ways to have conversations that drive more meaningful conversation. Yeah, and it's always better to uh, to try and focus before you get the punch in the face than afterwards, because it tends to hurt, because the punch in the face tends to hurt a bit. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yes. Yeah. So, Jermaine, what are some of the what are some of the tactics that people should be adopting right now to number one ensure that they maintain their customers, but also that they can look for opportunities of, for growth? Yeah. So, actually, if I take a step back, one of the biggest things I see is these relationship assumptions. So, um, going into your customer relationships, do not necessarily make the assumption that the relationship is exactly how you left it before the crisis took place. A uh, confidence in a way. Customers are now evaluating the comments they have with their partners has shifted. They are thinking differently about the partners that they work with. So the first thing is doing a quick audit of the customer relationship today. Uh, understanding that in principle, the relationship exists in three parts. You have trust, you have commitment, you have expectation. Trust is around the, the quality and character of the person and the competence that they see in you. Commitment is about the priority of the relationship expectations about the clarity of role you have in the relationship so if you aren't clear on those three things to start with get clear on that now and start to ask better questions to really engineer if you need to in re-engineering the trust getting greater commitments and expectations with the customer and i think right now i mean you'll find that uh, i think people are very open to conversations because it's almost like people are you know, craving more and more interaction with people, even during this time, and, and therefore they're open to those deeper conversations if you initiate them. Yeah, absolutely. I'm finding that to be the case as well. I think it's, it's also very important that we, we don't necessarily fall into the trap of simply pandering to the moment and using empathy as a place of, of believing in that will create goodwill later on. Right. People are actually looking for tangible, active, um, leadership based responses from their partners that they're working with. So I call it kind of leading from the front and the side. You need to be the visionary for the customer, start thinking about results and outcomes. And then as you lead to the side, helping them to execute key things right now that help them get a, a result within the next 30, 90 days. But we need to be that pragmatic. It cannot be just a pandering to the day. It has to be very, very focused on results. Yeah, I mean, that's an excellent, that's an excellent point. Uh, because yeah, I mean, people are looking for, I mean, number one, they're looking for confidence in the people that they're talking to, because they want to think, okay, this person seems to be focused forward, they seem to be um, coming up with great you know, business ideas, that gives con that, that, that confidence oh, is yeah. infectious in many ways, in a good way. And uh, Therefore, I think, yeah, you're absolutely 100% correct. You can't just sort of go, oh, it's in the terrible, what's going on right now? How are you? I mean, that's nice. That's nice openers, but you don't want to focus all your conversation there. No, not at all. I think right now, particularly in this whole idea of adaptation, uh, every business needs to be thinking about what is the advantage we need to create right now mm -hmm. so that we can leverage this later on. And so it's not just about the virtualization of your business. It's about how do we create something that gives the customer an advantage later on and proceeds us differently than anybody else. Because right now, at the end of six months or the end of this year, almost every business on the planet will be virtualized, yeah. those that are still around. And so virtualization by itself will not be your advantage. 
You need to find different ways to achieve results in different, in different manners and perhaps uh, ways you may not have thought before. And what I'm seeing with organizations today is that they're, they're investing in technology, they're investing in, in new capability, resourcing, bringing new kinds of roles into their business that they never had before to increase that capability to deliver results for customers. Yeah, absolutely. And the reality is that if you don't focus a little bit forward, then your customer and your customers focus purely in the present, then their natural instinct is going to be for battening down the hatches, for not doing anything, for kind of, well, let's just see how everything goes. So it's really up to you to, to focus them out of the present and into the future and show the potential. Yeah, absolutely. And it's important to say, if you've been doing the work for the last 12 months and really getting to know your customer, you should know the natural next step for them. Mm -hmm. If you've already achieved results for them, what is the natural next step for the customer that if they heard it from you today, they would say, absolutely, that makes sense. Let's go and do it. And if you don't have the answer to that, then it's very likely you don't understand the customer well enough yet. And so that needs to be a real conversation inside the business. How well do we know the customer? What do we need to find out? What don't we know? What need to, what do we need to know, I should say, and then make some adjustments there. Yeah, and I think that's a great that's a great point there about the natural next step because now is the time, obviously, to introduce the natural next step, but also to persuade them that now is the time to take that natural next step and not to postpone it. Yeah, and I think you know, that whole idea of urgency is really important. And so, what what I'd say, and I think we often necessarily don't necessarily communicate this very very well in the whole idea of sales and customer relationships, but we cannot move somebody who's in a negative state. So mm -hmm. you, you, you do have to deal with the emotion of the day, but do it in a very structured way. So I call it kind of just looking at emotions, triggers, and outcomes. So we understand that triggers are not necessarily just the external events. Yep. Sometimes it's what's happening internally in the business that triggers these emotional responses. So if you can begin to understand what kinds of triggers are impacting the behavior, then we can move towards a more proactive outcome, but you have to understand what's driving the emotion. Yeah, and, I, and it, I love that too, because the, the idea of triggers, because I think sometimes people overlook them and we have our own triggers too, that, mm. you know, as a salesperson or as, a, as anybody, you have to kind of examine your, what, what your own triggers are. But to your point, the triggers, if you're dealing with somebody in, in another organization, the triggers, you know, could be internal company related. They could be personal too. They mm. could be that yeah. person is maybe they're nervous. Maybe they're nervous about going to their, their boss to talk about taking the next step and part of what you need to do is is give them the equip them to do it but give them the confidence to do it yeah indeed and that word confidence is so important now more than ever and so mm -hmm. um we, we can think about confidence in different ways there is confidence of company confidence in person and confidence in the ability of the marketplace to actually recover mm -hmm. and i think that all these different confidences culminate into a single decision um, but that decision has to be done in partnership with the customer. So if you can give them confidence in the area that is weakest, meaning where's mm -hmm. the confidence that you need to build? Is it the person, company, viewpoint? Is it in the marketplace or where you're going? Um, identify the place of where the lack of confidence is and seek to build that first. Yeah, I mean, that's a great point is, uh, is making sure you're targeted in the right place because, yeah, there may be there may be confidence in the company itself, but it doesn't have confidence in the market. So it's, it's retrenching right now. Yeah, absolutely. And so there, there is this kind of holistic piece. And so, you know, if we think about what we have the influence over, what we can control, what's out of our concern, if you as an organization with your customer aren't thinking about where the influencing points, where the places you have control, you're always going to reach towards those things you cannot do. And so mm -hmm. it's our job as, as leaders of our customers, as customer leaders, to ensure that we bring them back to the middle and start thinking about the influence and the control pieces. Yeah, no, absolutely. So one thing you touched on earlier was, okay, is you need to make sure you know your accounts really well. So I think now, organizationally, <clears throat> this is a great time for the sales organization, maybe marketing, whatever, all to come together and really do a deep dive on accounts to make sure that, and get more perspectives in there and, and see where there are opportunities, get more ideas in there, but really, really brainstorm almost each account individually. Yeah, and I think it's important to take stock that sometimes actually in the wake of a, a positive environment, we don't necessarily 
let's just say, kind of put enough effort into segmentation work and understanding mm -hmm. who are our ideal customers and who do we actually want to work with. Mm -hmm. And actually, this is a great time to do this because, and, and here's just the, the plain reality, some of your customers will not be here at the end of this year. Yeah. Um, and that's what we're just seeing right now. And so for us now to be more involved, we have to get much clearer on who can we actually serve at the highest level right now? And you cannot do that with weak information or with people's inability or, or lack of want or desire to put in the right kinds of data into the system to allow you to make those kinds of decisions. So mm -hmm. now's a point in time, if you can begin to establish a much greater code of ethic around hearts and minds of why this is important, why do we need this data? Why do we need to engage our customers more proactively, more frequently? I think you'll get more compliance around CRM now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I have to say, yeah, speaking speaking selfishly with my CRM hat on, is I do think one thing that this uh, this crisis has highlighted for a lot of companies is if you don't have good visibility into your revenue, good as you say, good visibility into your customers and your accounts, if the data is not in your system, suddenly all of your employees may be scattered to the four winds working remotely. You're, you're kind of operating in a bit of a vacuum right now. So I think to your point, I think there's going to be, put it this way, I think there's going to be less tolerance for non-compliance going forward. Um, so yeah, to, to that point on CRM, John, but thank you for sharing that. You're absolutely right. And it's one of the biggest struggles. I know Pipeline does a fantastic job with customers and helping them to realize those goals through CRM. And I think a lot of customer companies just really suck at it, um, frankly. Yeah. Um, but they haven't necessarily sold the why before the what. Yes. And the why has to be more than just activity. It has to be a clear vision for what you're trying to create. Yeah, and no, absolutely. And, and like I said earlier, I mean, I think now it's a time that you've got to get all of your people involved now and you've got to get a much better um, insight and, and bring more people in. And maybe, maybe one of the lessons out of this too is instead of kind of putting your arms around your customers and keeping everybody in your company out because you don't want any interferences now to bring more perspectives in and actually reach out for help within your own organization. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if, if you can, I mean, this is the perfect time to start thinking about having some kind of your know, coordinated engagement team. It's something that I've actually um, been thinking about quite closely with a few customers right now is actually having a core, what we call kind of key account engagement or champions team where you actually come from all different departments, you share your perspectives on what the accounts are doing and you have a coordinated effort to go out and have these calls, these conversations with your top customers. And if you aren't, if you don't have a coordinated approach right like that right now, this is a perfect time to engineer that and get people really thinking and collaborating together. So um, so now obviously as we said it's a great time for people to come together and get those key accounts, uh, key account teams working, get your digital processes, get your compliance, get you know just be more efficient because let's face it, when times are good and business is good, you can you overlook a lot of inefficiencies. Oh, oh man, yeah, yeah, it happens so often. And, and part of these inefficiencies is not defining or starting with the end in mind. What are we actually trying to create through the processes that we are designing? And so they're not designed for the kinds of experiences or the kind of impact or results that they want to have with their customers long term or even within any kind of term. It's really functionally for the business. And so if you don't have a view of not just function of the business, but actually future impact, you're going to design processes that just don't fit how the, the or aren't necessarily flexible enough or adaptive enough to meet new customer demands. And that's what organizations are finding today. They just aren't or haven't been fit necessarily to adapt quickly to these new customer demands. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and just to change in general, because as I said, I mean, when you're, when, when business is good, you, you just tend to skate along and think, oh, what if it ain't broke? Uh, don't, you know, don't fix it. And now you're realizing, well, there probably were a lot of broken things that should have been fixed. And now it's coming home to, to mm -hmm. roost somewhat. So we definitely think, uh, and, and, and the other part is just looking at, at how buyer behavior may, may be going to evolve again now after this. Mm. Well, that's an interesting conversation. I think it's one that hasn't necessarily been had enough, but uh, I think all, all, all buying behavior is shifting from wants to needs. What mm -hmm. do I need right now? And that need conversation will either destroy the value proposition today 
or enhance it based on how you've actually positioned yourself um, both in the past, um, but now in the future. Yeah, because like we said, like I mean, you said it's very easy to sell to a want when budgets are plentiful, business is good, economy is great, life is good. It's a lot harder to to sell to needs when everything is everything is being pulled back. Mm, yeah, ab absolutely. So we need to now redesign the proposition to actually become more of a need based conversation, and that comes back to really understanding the business case for why your product exists in the first place and the problems it solves and then tying that back into the current situation. Yeah. And then just, and as I said, yeah, that's, that's, that's a, a perfect way of putting it. And again, like, look at how, how are you, how are you talking to customers? How are you presenting? Are you still presenting and, and talking in, in such a way um, that belongs to the pre-crisis era or have you adapted everything to, as we said, to the, to the needs, to what is critical right now and why, and it's your point is why is your product or service critical to, for somebody to buy right now? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and it's a bait, did some really interesting research on what they saw, what they, I think what they called the, the, the um, value pyramid. And essentially the value pyramid, they had evaluated a number of different organizations that had their product stacks designed in a certain way. And what they saw were those organizations that had these different components of elements together um, combined into their product and service had high yields in profit, uh, high you know, faster decision making, more emotional commitments by the customers. And all it really came down to was understanding how do we create needs based scenarios so that our products are much more sticky, much more, much less likely to get kicked out easily in a financial checklist that organizations have. And it makes it much more compelling for the business case internally. Yeah, and I think that's a, I think that's a great place, a great place for us to end today because I think that's a, that's a, a, a perfect takeaway from this is really go every company, go back and see, are you, are you doing needs-based selling? Do you really understand how your product or service can meet a critical need right now or in the immediate future? Or are you still a little more vague? Are you still selling to wants? Have you not ad adapted or adjusted things, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so I, I think what we're going to find now is that the real sellers are going to, are going to thrive and, and those who aren't are simply going to die now in the next, uh, next few months. Um, but it's a great opportunity for those who are willing to take up the charge. Yeah, no, I, I, I absolutely agree. And I think, yeah, the, the, the good ones will, will do very well. And the ones who maybe were, were doing well because everybody was doing well may, may discover that it's a little harder. Mm. All right. Well, my name is yeah, yeah. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine Pipeliner CRM. All of Jermaine's information is available in his bio um, on Sales Pop. But before we go, Jermaine, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. So right now, actually, the uh, the company is set up to help good companies keep great customers. And so what we recognize is that there are these five big traps that every organization falls into. We know we know what they are. We know how to stop them and we know to help, how to help organizations become the kind of organization their customers never want to leave. And so that's where we focus our time in creating that kind of superior value that is unrefuted in their marketplace. Yeah, fantastic. And as you can see, I mean, Jermaine's got great ideas. He's very, very energetic and enthusiastic. So I really encourage you to check him out. All right. Uh, anyway, I will see you all for another expert insight interview very soon. Thank you. Excellent.